The big news this weekend, of course, was the deal between the U.S., Iran, and other world powers to slow down Iran's nuclear program. Skeptics, including Israel and some in Congress, are saying Iran can't be trusted and that the U.S. should have taken a harder line in the talks. For a closer look at the deal, we're joined tonight by our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, from our D.C. newsroom. Andrea, good evening. Good evening, Brian. The Iran nuclear freeze came together after months of secret talks between Iran and the U.S. and a decision by both sides to accept vague language to sidestep a big disagreement that could still jeopardize a final deal six months from now. In San Francisco, the president defended the Iran deal today from a barrage of critics. And tough talk and bluster may be the easy thing to do politically, but it's not the right thing for our security. At the same moment, his secretary of state was returning home from his marathon deal making. Even as members of Congress from both parties flooded the airwaves, claiming the U.S. gave too much and got too little. The Ayatollah wants that bomb, and as he continues to organize these rallies in downtown uh, in the capital where people are yelling death to America. In fact, the Ayatollah told Iran's President Rouhani and Foreign Minister Zarif his bottom line was getting the right to enrich uranium for nuclear fuel. The U.S. refused. We have not recognized Iran's right to enrich. We will not recognize Iran's right to enrich. And it's not in the agreement. But Iran's foreign minister told Ann Curry. It doesn't say in so many words, but it, it says very clearly that Iran will have an enrichment program and it has a right to nuclear technology for peaceful purposes. So how did they finesse it? Partly with the help of a cloak and dagger operation. Months of secret talks with Iran and the Persian Gulf country of Oman, held by Deputy Secretary of State William Burns, Under Secretary Wendy Sherman, and Biden advisor Jake Sullivan. In the end, they came up with Diplo speak, creative ambiguity. The text says a final agreement, hopefully in six months, would involve a mutually defined enrichment program with practical limits and inspections, all still to be negotiated. Both sides declared victory. The critics say that only sows the seeds for big problems down the road. It is a huge difference. This is not about two people in a deal trying to put the best face on it as they walk out. But in Tehran, people are celebrating at the prospect of getting even some relief from crippling sanctions, says NBC's Ali Arouzi. There is a sense of cautious euphoria here. Iranians are eager for economic prosperity after years of sky-high prices. Now they're hoping for tangible changes that will affect their buying power and quality of life. So did the U.S. win or cave in? Experts say it's way too early to tell. It will depend on whether this temporary freeze on Iran's nuclear program leads to a bigger deal, permanently removing the chance that Iran could ever build a nuclear weapon. Brian? Andrew Mitchell in our D.C. newsroom tonight.